Hey, welcome to Bifocal. Today's show is a, a continuation of our entrepreneur series. And uh, we have an owner of a Microsoft Dynamics CRM company. And he's been in business for several years. He's agreed to come on and share his journey. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. As I said, this is part of our entrepreneur series and uh, we have a business owner on and uh, he's got an interesting story. And uh, I thought that it would be good to have him on and share that story. He's the owner of uh, Trellis Point, a CRM, Microsoft CRM uh, company. He's been around for several years and uh, let me introduce you to him. Chris, Chris Fennessy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dan, uh, happy to be here. Yeah, so I gotta start out by asking how did you come up with the name Trellis Point? Oh yeah, it's it's a good uh, good uh, question there. So when we were uh, starting the company, we wanted to find a first of all, we really wanted to find a name that had a .dot com uh, uh, URL. So you know, obviously, even eleven years ago when we started the company, it was it was tough tough, to, tough to get them. And so we we sat back and looked and looked around and tried uh, different names and and really. One of the things that stuck to us is what do we do? Well, we help companies grow and we work with growth companies. And if you know anything about a plant and a trellis, right? The trellis is put into the ground and that plant will grow up, the vine will grow up on that trellis and go through different uh, weaves and areas yeah. on that trellis. And we are there to help <clears throat> companies uh, as they move through their journey and they're different weaves and the different paths that they take. And so trellis and the point of the trellis point is to get you somewhere, right? And so that you're, you are getting uh, the effectiveness <coughs> out of the solution and you're getting value from us helping you because we're a professional services firm. So, so you put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, and, and so trellis point is, uh, and if you see our, our uh, logo, it's a trellis, right? And uh, it allows you to get to that point in your your business where we can help you, and then and then it takes off into another yeah. twist. You right? get many people asking you, <clears throat> excuse me, how you came up with the name? We do because they're always like, it, "Trellis Point has nothing to do with CRM. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, te technology." Well, then yeah. sure enough, it does. But if they're asking you, it, it's serving its purpose. Yeah, absolutely, it does. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Trellis Point. What is Trellis Point? So we're a Microsoft Dynamics 365 partner that uh, services the customer engagement side of Dynamics 365. So Microsoft in their infinite wisdom has a, a big uh, Dynamics 365 uh, focus on different products. It could be ERP or accounting software. It's CRM, what we focus on. It could be talent, could be uh, human resources. Uh, it's it's a it's a whole. So you're 100 percent focused on CRM, just customer <clears throat> engagement. Yeah, and, and and the word CRM is almost is old now, right? We we've been working with it for I've been working with it almost 20 years now. Yeah. And back then it was Salesforce automation, right? Or or SFA as we know it. But now it's and then it turned into CRM or customer relationship management. And yeah. now it's business applications. So how long has Trellis Point been around? So we started in 2009, and the uh, one of the hardest economies to start up in. And yeah, that uh, was through the kind of the recession period. Yeah, that there. was. And uh, we, we started, uh, you know, just with a couple clients. And, and now we've grown into two offices uh, in Cleveland and Cincinnati and almost 25 people now and oh, wow. solely focused. And, and that's been a good thing. We, we started, we, we, we did some work with salesforce.com. We we did work with uh, sales logics, which people might remember uh, now known yep. as Infor CRM. And about two years ago, we decided to go strictly with the Microsoft Dynamics platform. And that has been able to enable us to be laser focused in one solution and allow us to just Specialize, uh, hone in, specialize in those <clears throat> in, in that solution, and clients come to us knowing that we know that solution. So that's all you do. If somebody wants Salesforce, we recommend to other people. Uh, if someone wants Infor, we recommend them to other people. We've 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 gotten to There's know our business out there from Microsoft. We've gotten to know ourselves pretty well, right? Yeah. And 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 like anybody, it's is once you become focused. And that was a little scary at first when we when we decided just to. Specialize. Did you think like when you first started your business? I guess 
going to be able to sell lots of stuff because of what I got to do, whatever I got to do to make money. It was so true. It was like, all right, we'll, we'll do Pivotal. We'll do Act. We'll do <laughs> Sales Logics. We'll do Salesforce. And it was like, we, because we, to your point, you need, you want to make sure there's cash flow coming in the door, right? For not only yourself, but have your, you learned as a businessman, cash flow is kind of king. <laughs> cash is king, right? <laughs> uh, I have a brother that's a, a, a CPA and that's the first thing he says, cash <laughs> is king. <laughs> so how did, how did you get the idea? Had you, had you been in that industry and walk me through how you even got started? What was that kicking point that? Yeah. So, so um, way back when, when I was a kid, uh, I actually mowed lawns and my father, I was the youngest of six. Uh, so I'll bring it way back. And, and I was brought up in, in the family. Just, we, we mowed the, the neighbor's yards. We probably had 10 or 15 yards. My boys and, did that. Right. And, <clears throat> and so uh, the spirit was, was almost back when I was about 14 years old doing that. And, and my dad taught us how to do the books how to um, you know, set up a maintenance fund so you had cash when the lawnmower broke down and how oh, wow. to uh, go, get, go get the gas, go to the front door and collect the money, uh, go to the front door and ask for the business, right? And, and do all that stuff. So it, it really started at a young age. And I remember- You were a salesperson young. I didn't even know it, I had, had no clue. So I went to college, went to Kent State, and you know, didn't even know what I wanted to do at college, right? And so I've, I followed my dad's fo footsteps of going into accounting. And uh, so I came out as, a, as an accountant or a financial controller and worked with the Sherman Williams company, the paint company for a number of years, and really cut my, my business knowledge and learning all that at, at Sherman Williams. And they taught me a ton about business and, and process and following procedures and going through all the, the steps and motions. And then about seven years after I was at Sherwin Williams, or six years it rather it was, I was, you know, I wasn't wasn't as interested in working as an accountant anymore and wanted to kind of get more into technology. And so I went to work for a really small uh, consulting, not really small, but a consulting firm. And then um, that firm grew up over the years and was bought and sold throughout. What did you do years. there? So I, I came on as a Mass 90 accounting consultant, believe it or okay. not. Okay, so, so kind of up your alley a little bit, right? Yeah, because <clears throat> I, 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 I took technology and I took my, my financial background and put them together. Well, about 30 days into that, I got into the CRM world. And I really, then they're like, hey, can you grow this practice for us? And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. What, was, what would be the time frame on this? What would be like date range? So that would have been around 1998, 1999. Okay. You started your business in 2009. 2000. So we're 10 years prior to your business. Yeah. So I kind of knew, it was, it was kind of exciting even then because I, I, I was, it had the ability to start a practice within a small company. They actually, you know, they had a payroll, so I, they, they could pay me and, and do things. And then as time progressed, um, th that company got bought and sold many times. And by the time the ten, it was about the eleventh year, we got to the next uh, next step, and it was it was a good separation to start Trellis Point. And I knew at that point that I wanted to do something because I wanted to be a difference maker in you know what I was doing and to help. But were business. you selling CRM? prior to going into Trellis Point? So I was, yeah. So we were selling CRM and it was, uh, it would have been sales logics for people out there. So how long did you sell CRM prior to in Trellis or <sighs> Trellis Point? Probably about seven. Well, no, no, I would say it's about 10 years. So we, we, we were okay, selling so CRM. So you were seasoned in CRM. I was, yeah. So we, we knew, I knew the product, I knew the evolution, I knew where it came from. And, and how it really uh, worked for businesses. So we knew I knew the model that I wanted, but it was it was it was now it was doing it on our own. So when you started Trellis Point, did you stay in the sales logic arena? Is that where you started? So we so we stayed in the sales logics arena because the company I'd come from had decided to end their practice with that. And uh, then we uh, quickly got into Microsoft Dynamics CRM, and then there got into Salesforce.com, going to the point of we were trying, we just wanted to make sure that we had cash, right? Yeah. And we would do all these things. And it was, they, they're all very similar. Uh, but going back to why, you know, it was, it was, it was an interest. I, my, I remember my dad saying, hey, one thing that you really want to do in your life, try to be your own boss. And I'll never forget that those words from him. And this is back when I was probably eighteen or nineteen at, at school. Probably didn't even understand a lot of it. No, then, I had right? no idea. He 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 was a partner in a CPA firm uh, back in Erie, Pennsylvania, 
And uh, I remember him looking at me and he's like, Chris, one thing that you want to try to do is, is be your own boss. Go out there and do it if you can. And, 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 and when the time presented itself, it's like, hey, this is this is a great. Is your thing. dad still around today? No, he's not. He didn't. He didn't see the the startup of it, but my mother did, and uh, she's very, you know, obviously very proud of what we've been able to do in these eleven years, and uh, yeah. as as well as my other family members are. And it's fun to be able to to eleven years later and say, look what we've done. Oh yeah, and uh, look what we've accomplished, and and what we're able to do, and bring people on, and and provide for families, and. It's really cool to to, to kind of look yeah. back and see where, where when you been. were making that decision. Hey, I'm thinking about going out on my own. Mm -hmm. What were some of the the considerations? What were some of the fears? Or uh, I, the, the biggest one would 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 we actually be able to bring customers on? Would somebody out there actually say yes to what we were offering? And, you know, that was really scary because as, as a single entrepreneur and then shortly. Was it just you? It was just me in the beginning. And then I brought on a partner and uh, then we had a. So day one, Chris is out by himself. Mm -hmm. If you sold a customer, who was doing the implementation of it? Uh, I was you're looking at him. So, so you were doing everything. Yeah, I did the implementation a lot. And then very quickly thereafter, I had uh, some people come on with me. So it wasn't that long that I was that I had to do it myself, yeah. and knowing that we had people in, in, you know, in the world of contractors and people that will work with you. Uh, did you have any outside companies lined up in the event you got into something that was over your head or you didn't know? Did you have any resources? So we knew people that we could go to, that we could contract, uh, that made it a little easier from our mindset, right? But the but the, uh, the clients looked at you and said, oh, you're only one or two or three people deep, right? How, how can I trust that you know how to do this? And, and you know, so and you got to look at people and say, hey, I, I'm good. You know, I, I, you got to have confidence. Trust me. Yes. Trust. <laughs> my wife trusts me. Why don't you trust me? Well, that's a good point. I remember my wife looking at me. She's like, do you really want to do this? Yeah. Where was she through this decision? Where are we going to get the, where, where's the money going to come? Because <laughs> at that point we had uh, twin, well, I, we have twin boys and a, a, a daughter. And the boys. So how old were they then? They, I want to say they were two years old. Uh, two or three years old, and my daughter was probably about six so months. You, you went out on the limb. Oh yes, yeah, and and we had a little money saved, right? But not a lot. And I remember looking at my wife and saying, "Kathleen, I th we may have to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches." Did and she work? She was not working. She's at the time. stay at home mom. Yeah, she she had, she was stay at home mom. So so at that time, I was the only one bringing in income, and uh, it was scary, right? Uh, I remember her it's like she was looking at me. She's like, "Do you, you really want to do this?" I'm like, "I really want to do this." And she had 100 percent confidence in me because I was looking at her straight in the eyes and saying, "Kathleen, we're going to do this." And, and she's like, "Well, if you're in, I'm in." And uh, you know, God bless her because she 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 was, isn't that amazing. Yeah, she that, was as strong with this as anybody else, and I couldn't have done her without her because you needed the support. Absolutely. And and you know, I wanted to take care of the family, and you know, I I wasn't able to stay at home, and she she took a big step at staying at home, yeah. you know, and staying with the kids. And that's a big step, right? When you started, did you have any revenue lined up? Like, did you have some customers or an account kind of position for you? I mean, where was that? We kind of knew that we would probably have one or two, but I can't say that we did. There was no commitment. When we started the company, there was zero commitment from any client to come work with us. And um, so when we started the company, uh, you know, <clears> I, I, I got on the phone, the, the infamous get on the phone and just start calling Working people, out of your house, right? And go meet people uh, and, and sit down with them and tell them, you know, remind them what you do, who you are, why you're good at what you do, why they need to trust you, why they need to trust you. And, and, and the good thing is I'd been in the workforce for, you know, at least 10 years at that point. And so a lot of people knew who I was, knew my name and could vouch for me, yeah. right? And could take, so it wasn't a high risk, but it was, you know, it was like, hey, there's only, there's one person, there's two people, there's three people. And so they had to take a little bit of risk, but but we also, I don't want to say gave guarantees, but we said, hey, we are going to be here. We're not going anywhere. And they knew what our What was background. some of your early business like? Was it, a, was it a customer saying, hey, Chris, I got this little project. Could you just fix this for me? Or was it a customer saying, hey, I need you to implement this? 
what would the kind of couple first couple jobs look like? Yeah, I'll say I, I know the first job was uh, somebody that owned the software already and needed support on the software. Okay. So that was easy, right? We 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 mm-hmm. knew that we could help them because we knew that we could uh, yeah. assist with their with their project and, and do that. Um, so that was that was an easy one. We had another client that wanted to do an upgrade to an existing system that we already knew, right? And at that time, people and uh, they didn't know certain platforms, just almost like today. It's a, it's a niche market, right? There's not not too many people. There's enough people out there that know CRM, but not a ton. So people came to us because they knew that we knew it and they knew that we could assist them. So um, so the first couple were more supporting of existing systems that were already mm-hmm. in place and they needed help because they didn't have the internal resources to go to. Yeah. And then uh, they, they became our references for new clients uh, to come on board. And then we got into a partner program. And at that time, it was known as Sales Logics the, 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 before we got into the Define micro- the partner program. So a partner program would be um, you would sign up, uh, you'd be you would be trained in the application, and you would be a, a partner that they would go to to implement their software. Almost, you're endorsed now. You're endorsed, correct? Was that hard? Uh, it wasn't hard because when we when we did leave, uh, or when I did leave, uh, the the partner knew me particularly, and they knew that we I was good at what I did, and knew that I could bring on a team of individuals and grow that practice. Was it was it a matter you pay a fee and? It was a fee. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of the way it was back then. Yeah, right? it's a fee and it's a twenty five hundred dollars, and you get our logo, and that's kind of how they did it, right? Yes, yeah, so it's a little blue logo for Sales Logic, <laughs> and they said, "Here, uh, we'll take your credit card, right?" And I was like, "Wait a minute, how am I going to pay that credit card off? Uh, I better get a client faster than anything." So, did um, you have a uh, any type of a uh, a business plan, even if it was on a napkin, that you said, "Hey, I." I think I can generate revenue by this time, or this is how I think I will do it. Do you have anything like that? Yeah. So, so financial brain that I am, right? I I made sure that I knew what the numbers needed to be, right? I knew that if we needed to bring a certain amount of sales, right, to gave so much margin, so many billable hours to bring in real cash, right, and then we knew our expenses. Our expenses were low. There's, you know, from it's it's a computer, it's a it's a telephone. And it's internet connectivity, right? And a, and a partner fee to, to get on there. So we knew the numbers. And I knew, uh, actually coming from my, my Sherwin-Williams days, that, hey, top line uh, sales, margin within there, and then the expenses that go along with that. And, and that made it real easy. And, yeah. and, and uh, we had the plan in place. How long did you kind of think before you started that, did you forecast that it was going to take before you started generating revenue? Six months. We we, oh, assu- wow. we assumed that we would have zero income for, for six, six months. months. And I that, that goes back to my wife. I remember she's like, six months. I'm like, well, that's we, wow. that's we, we got to look at it that way because if if we if that's we prob- was probably pretty realistic though. back then it was because we were we were in a we were pretty deep in a recession. And th- there was no guarantees, right? And so we knew uh, that it might. But but the good thing about it, literally within 30 days, we were we were in positive. Um, we uh, we had I had such a reputation along with the people that I brought on board that they knew that we were going to uh, take care of them, and so we were able to get out of that hole relatively quickly. Um, you know, maybe we weren't where we wanted to be, yeah. but we were in we were a generating money. We were there, right? The, and, that, and that's one thing I've always been uh, cautious about. You know, I say we are not <clears throat> big spenders. We don't go out and flaunt things. We we invest back in the company. We invest in the training, invest in the people, and, and want to make sure that. You know, what was your that. first year like? Was it? Did you have some of this stuff in your first year, or was it just kind of steady and it just kept going? What that looked like? Yeah, that's good. That's too. Uh, so, so you sold, you implemented, you supported, right? So think about you, you sold the deal, you went into implementation, and that might take ninety days. And then you were supporting it. And then you came out of that going, oh, no, I got to go get the next deal. Because you're the only guy. Selling it, right? If you're working, you're nobody's selling it. So you want to talk about great ups and then huge, a huge down, right? Because it's like. When you were working, you're making great money. Right? And then you're like, project's over. 
I got to go get the next deal. So then it's like, oh no, what am I going to do? You know, so you're, so you're thinking, and, and that was funny because that was one thing we didn't really think, I didn't think through when I, when we did the plan is that sales uh, uh, funnel and, and putting those into the pipeline so that when you were halfway through that you had the next one lined up so that when you ended that one, right, or coming yeah. down that you had it going. So we did have some, so for all, probably two years, maybe three years, we had some big, highs and some big lows sure uh, with that wow what about uh did you have a backup plan like hey if this doesn't work i'll do this yeah so i knew that i could probably go work for a, another consulting firm right that somebody would probably hire me if I was unable to succeed, you were with comfortable. This. You could get a job. Yeah, because we, you know, that, that, if there's anything, I got some confidence, right? Maybe good or bad, whatever that's whatever that's useful for. But it was like, if if we don't succeed, I know there's partners out there, and I know a lot of people. That's one good thing. I have a good network of people, friends, family, business partners, business owners, and I've always. One thing I don't do is burn bridges with people, and it's it's you know we we like to try to keep even if even if we're not friendly at all times, it's hey you know things happen, and you know don't 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 burn that bridge down down the road because you never know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. So yeah. so the backup was I I would go and, and probably work with with a firm. Now I didn't have any firms lined up, didn't know yeah. anything, uh, but that <clears throat> that would have been the plan. Was there any point in that first year or two that you really began to question? Are we going to make it? <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, we, 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 when we started, um, literally within the first couple of days, we had three, I want to say three, maybe four clients right off the get-go. So we had a pretty good confidence boost when we started this thing that people wanted. wanted, so wanted early us. on, you're going... I, I think I can make a business. I out think of this. this is going to work. And I, and I, you know, and it was it, not, then it was a matter of about a year into it, it was more worried about could we keep up with potential clients that wanted to work with When us. did you start hiring people? Uh, about six months after uh, uh, we started. So no, no, Dang. excuse me. It was it was a year after that we start we started hiring. What was that him. first position you hired? So it was a developer. We had a big project. Uh, if if people remember First Merit Bank, which is now part of Huntington, uh, they wanted us to upgrade their system, and it was a big deal. It was uh, probably five hundred users. I'm going to guess. Uh, you know, lots of people. Uh, and there was only two of us. You shaking? Uh, yeah, I was like, oh boy. Uh, this is kind of like, what are we You shaking do? or are you counting the dollars? <laughs> yeah, well, a little bit of both, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, this is going to be a good contract. Honey, uh, we're going to get a new car. We got this one. Um, but but we knew that we there's no way we could do it with just the, just two people. So then we hired a developer, uh, brought brought that person on board who's still with us uh, oh, wow. nine years later or 11 years later. And uh, it's, uh, you know, then, then we knew uh, that we needed another developer and then a business analyst and then a salesperson. Right. Um, so it was it was it was a slow, methodical process. Now, the first person you hired was it somebody you knew. It was. It was a referral source from a friend of mine that I that I had gone to school with at, at Kent. Uh, so he knew this person. I had known him previously, and uh, it was it was a good match. How difficult was that for you, as a business owner, hiring your first employee? So it was nerve wracking because we knew it was a sal it was a true salary. Uh, you know, there was there, the two of us uh, that were so, somewhat started the company. Uh, we knew that we could, you know, if we didn't take a salary, we didn't take a salary, right? Yeah. It was uh, that's and that, that's that, where you were in for it. That that's, happened. That's right? it. We, there was months where in the beginning we didn't take a salary, um, but th this one was a little bit different because we knew that hey, we're making a commitment. Um, every two weeks, we're gonna put money into your bank account. We're going to take the taxes out. We're going to start, we started up a 401k right away, uh, did the health insurance right away. We knew that we needed to do certain things. Big financial move. It was big. It was, it was, that was scary. Um, I, you know, and, and I had a, a good CPA, actually my brother was a CPA. He helped, helped us out, uh, helped us find a, a lawyer to make sure that we had the right contracts in place. 
Um, you know, in, in the, uh, did you have an office at that point or was everyone at their homes? Uh, th three basements, <laughs> my basement, uh, another basement and another basement. Right. Um, and, and it was just uh, making sure that we were able to communicate about six months after we hired that individual, we did get some space, uh, which, which was a, I remember the person we rented it from, he's like, you're never going to go back now. You, you're going to need space and you're going to want space. And I'm like, well, why we can do that. So I'm up, but now, you know, you, you need, you need that collaboration. Right. Yeah. Um, I remember those years for me, I would say relative to, um, the size of the company and everything, hiring my first employee and leasing my first office space were probably two of the biggest decisions that I made. It was scary that the office, right? That lease that says you have a commitment for not less than one, but maybe five years, right? Um, and you're looking at it going, holy cow, do I really want to well, sign I'm, this? I'm, I'm good with this project I got now for three months. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and and you look at it and go, oh boy, I, be, you know, I, I better have enough cash you know, in the bank to, if something happens uh, to do that. And uh, yeah, that was a, that, that signing that lease was a commitment. And what was nice is we knew some people <clears throat> that had office spaces. Uh, so they gave us some breaks on the, the terms of the, uh, of the, of the lease itself. Um, we went and bought, I remember buying desks and going down to downtown Cleveland and into office warehouse and picking out a bunch of desks and like, oh, this is going to cost, you know, even for used furniture, it was expensive. Oh right? gosh, I, I remember when when I started my business, it cost fifteen hundred dollars just to hire somebody. By the time we bought the desk, oh yeah, yeah, bought the chair, bought the PC, the monitor, yeah, yeah, the phone, right. All of that was, it was $1,500 just to get them in the office. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's before you got them doing anything, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we, we, well, then you got the insurance and, you know, the training of them and all, all the pieces and parts that go and you're on. watching and, every hour they work yeah. to make sure that you're billing somebody for it, right? <laughs> utilization, utilization, <laughs> utilization, right? Uh, it's key. And, and you know, it, it's amazing how you look at those things and, and you look back and go, ah, you know, that, I, I really was a little tedious on certain things. But but that's how you got through times yeah. too, right? You know that you have to look at things. Did you feel like during those times you were, you were um, flying on momentum and passion and drive and was like nothing was going to stop you it's definitely um it, there's definitely something that comes from the client's perspective from the customer right so you know when the customer comes to you and says i need this because we're going through something that needs your expertise to make us better and the drive is if i make them that much better not only do i feel good about it but they're going to want me to either do more or they're going to recommend me to their other friends or business partners or things like that. So the drive it was is still there today. I love going into a business and seeing what is going on and how can we help them be better, right? How can we be, be make them more effective? How can we give them the value for what we do? And it's, it's fun because you walk in there and you see you're still doing things on spreadsheets. You're still putting manual uh, sticky notes that here and there. Do you know if you just did this? And there's still companies doing that stuff. Oh my goodness, all over the place. And, and, and it's, it's, we're very passionate about how we can help them, right? And, and show them what we can do. And it's not about, you know, obviously we're, a for, I, I always tell the customers that we're a for-profit business, right? I always tell people it's that we're not a non-profit. Yeah. We are a for-profit, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we're out there to gouge you. It doesn't mean we're out there just to take from you. We want to give as much as we can back to you yeah. for the value that we're providing. And once we find that, that 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 common ground, everybody's so happy, and and yeah. I enjoy that more than anything because we can we really give to them what they're looking for, and it's they're they're good at what they do. We're good at what we do, right? Yeah. And and it's like that commonality. Really, it's sure. that's what's fun. I, I so you mentioned that. you you started in sales logics, mm -hmm. and you did that for a while, and now but now you're Microsoft. What was that transition? So that was scary too, right? Because we were putting all our eggs into one basket. So, like, what was the time frame of that? Yeah. So, so when we first started, we were doing sales logics. Then, then uh, probably 
within a couple months, we started doing the, the Microsoft CRM. And then about a year after- What caused you to, to sway from sales logic? Uh, we, had a, we had people asking us, would you implement Microsoft? Um, Were you seeing Microsoft at that time as this might be the up and coming and I want to get in? Yes, yes. And then, and really at that time, Salesforce.com, which, uh, which you're familiar with, was very, uh, it was even as big as well. Um, so when people started to come to us, they were like, you know SalesLogix, you, you probably know Microsoft, and oh, by the way, you probably know Salesforce. And I'll never forget a friend of mine who worked for uh, General Electric out of Erie, Pennsylvania, the, the locomotive uh, facility, which is now since gone. But he came to me and says, Chris, you know CRM. We don't know CRM. And I'm like, but I, and, and they wanted to implement Salesforce.com. And I'm like, I have no idea how to implement Salesforce.com. And he's like, I don't care you know how to implement CRM and how to do it the right way. I said, well, as long as we're on the same page that I know CRM, but I don't know Salesforce being as transparent as possible. He's like, absolutely. Just come in and how, tell us how to do that. Back, what, what would rough date for that period? So that probably would have been about, uh, say, 2011, 2011, 2012. Were there many Salesforce partners around at that time? There weren't. Yeah, yeah there was very few, right? And, and so we were in a niche. And we, we had a really uh, interesting story because we, we have implemented CRM systems. We knew how to do it. And CRM is different than an accounting system. And it's different than a document management system. It's different than a web system. It's, it's, you're dealing with a different person. And our, the way we are processing going through it and just talking with people, they knew we knew what we were doing and how to go through it and, and, and make it successful for them, take it in buckets and pieces and parts and things like that. Um, and, and actually, that leads into another one. We had a client in Toronto, Canada that um, came to us. Uh, it was a, uh, the uh, pension company uh, it was, uh, that handled the pensions out of, uh, out of Toronto. And they came to us and said, hey, we, we heard about you. I'm like, you heard about us? How the heck do you know about us? And so, so somebody had referred us uh, to a company in Toronto, Canada. We ended up spending two years up in Toronto helping Im implement a product known as Pivotal. I, you know, I, I probably can't even spell it right now. But um, it was a big product. And so we ended up doing a project. Pivotal was a big, it was a big platform. Yeah. Up, up, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't heard it very, very Not much lately. lately. But, but it's been, and it, I've come to find out it's big in Canada. Um, uh, I guess it's based out of Canada. But we ended up implementing Pivotal for two years, uh, assisting this one company. And they very, very successful implementation and happy, but um, totally out of our, our, our realm so of now you what got sales logics, you're dabbling in Salesforce, and you're dabbling in Pivotal. All right. And, and Life's good. Microsoft, yeah. And, and things, so, so we have contractors. We have a couple employees. How many employees, uh, roughly? So think? at that point, would have been three employees uh, and two contractors. Good little business going, manageable. Mm -hmm. Yes, working well. Cash is good. Uh, projects are coming in. Uh, but we're still having these big ups and these big big downs, right? And that was about three, What's about causing four that? years. Nobody is out doing sales. Nobody's, I was the salesperson, right? And we didn't have a person dedicated to going out and finding new business. And that's when we kind of looked at ourselves and said, how oh, we, we need to have a little bit more focus on not just doing the work and doing good work, but going out and finding work and putting it into the pipeline. So, so that's when we decided that I would almost take a step back from being in the business to being outside the business and looking for things. So you became, so you were the, you were the sales guy. I was the de facto sales, true salesperson in, in that role. And then um, probably in the middle of the, I want to say it was, it was probably seven, six, seven years ago, there's a program that Goldman Sachs has out there called 10,000 Small Businesses. Not sure if you've ever heard of it or not. Mm -hmm. But Goldman Sachs put this on, and it's basically an executive MBA program that uh, I went through. And it, it, was, it was squeezed down into, I want to say, four months. And there was about 60 of us that went through this program in Cleveland. From sales to human resources to uh, office space and talent and everything. It was, it was a wonderful program. And it really opened up my eyes of different things that we need to do, i.e. focus on sales, 
focus on marketing. I was never a big marketing person, right? And it's still, still people laugh at me in the company. They're like, you still hate marketing. I'm like, I can't stand marketing, but it's critical to the organization, right? Mm. You got to get your name out there. And so, um, so it, it took a different life uh, or a different picture of the company of what we need to do and how we need to do things and, and have some great friends and great peers that I still go to, yeah. to, to work with out of that organization. So how did you end up what was the thought process or the transition of going from managing multiple platforms to I'm going to focus on one? Direction. Yeah, yeah. So we, 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 about three years ago, we looked at the business and we, we basically looked at the revenue, right? And said, okay, where is the majority of the revenue go, uh, coming in from? And where are we spending our time? And where do we really believe uh, we can be a big player in and in, in, in what we can do. And it all pointed to Microsoft. We knew Salesforce was, a, you know, as a behemoth in the, in the space, but our revenue wasn't coming from Salesforce. Uh, sales logics had been bought and sold by numerous companies and it, they just did not have the uh, presence any longer, the back backbone and presence, as you say, uh, an R and D put into the product. And, Microsoft was really pushing hard for this product line, and they had just redeveloped They wanted it, to own the market. Right? They came in and lowered the price, and they knew Salesforce wasn't going anywhere. They knew where they were at. Well, they also knew they had a captive market. They had all of these Microsoft users, all these Outlook users. They How thought, hey, yeah, makes sense for everyone to come over and use our CRM now. And how about they knew things were going to the cloud, right? They they were in a they were in a little transition state themselves, right? Because they had all these on premise products, yeah, Office, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, right, uh, SQL, right. All of these on premise, and all of a sudden, five years ago, things are really moving to the cloud, right? They knew they needed to do something. And so we took a leap of faith a little bit, right? Looking at the product line and saying, okay, are they really do are they really putting the money where, where we think they need to be putting the money? And sure enough, they, they you know, fast forward, they did. And they moved their product lines. First, they moved the, the Office suite, so the, the, the Microsoft uh, Office 365, right? Everybody knows email. Yep. And then they moved their, their document management known as SharePoint. Uh, and then they then they moved the Dynamics platform to online, uh, and it was actually built as a web-based platform to begin with. So it wasn't really hard for them to do it, but they actually moved everything then to an online presence. And as soon as we started seeing that, it was so much easier for us to implement because then we didn't have to deal with servers, we didn't have to deal with. Uh, networks yeah. to get through firewalls to get through VPNs, all this stuff. It's all just, the IT people you probably had to deal with, and and that's never fun. No, but you know they're good people. It's just they they need to have their space within the organization, and they need to make sure it's you're super, an outsider, right? They don't want us poking in their servers, their server rooms, or or, or VPNing into their environments and and getting in because all we are is a, a security threat, which I totally understand. Yeah. So what was nice about the cloud? Hey. We have a we have a username and password. We're responsible. You're responsible for allowing us in, and here here's our access. So by Microsoft really putting the research and development efforts into the cloud, has made a huge difference for our model um, from a from a professional services perspective sure. uh, to allow us. To so grow. when you made that that decision, what were things that you you had to do or you did to say? Hey, I'm moving this direction. Did you do anything like proactive? Did I mean you made this decision, but was it was it chart what causing you to start moving a direction now? So uh, I don't know if it was anything too uh, drastic. We we slowly started talking to our sales logics customers and, and telling them, okay, as of this date, we're no longer going to support the product. Um, we'll find you a partner. Uh, so you made a decision that you're not even going to support it any longer. Yeah, yeah. And that, that had to that be was, a big decision. That was you. that was tough because we have old. These are these are legacy clients that we started with. Probably had recurring revenue coming. Yep, off of that model. But we also knew it was diminishing, 
And if, if we didn't do something, we were going to be diminished. <laughs> we but were, it was a market for you maybe to convert. Move them over. So we created a migration path from SalesLogix to Dynamics for an easy move. Now, many of the customers said, thank you, no yeah. thank you. <laughs> uh, but there, and, and we still have conversations with them and point them to the right, you know, there's still a couple, it's, it's like Lotus Notes, if you remember Lotus Notes, right? There's still people using Lotus Notes, I know there is. Uh, but eventually they have to do something, yeah. right? Um, so we, we made that migration path, make it very easy. Just like Microsoft had an on-premise product, right? That they didn't, the, the online product is a different database. So we had to move, so, so we used the same migration path that we built for the sales logics to online for on, on-premise dynamics customers to online, right? Okay. Where Salesforce is always born in the cloud, yeah. there was never an on-premise database. Yeah. Microsoft for, and they still have this, but for, for a lot more back. Well, how difficult was ago. it to become a Microsoft partner? What'd you have to do there? So we had to get certifications. Uh, we had to take tests. We had to prove that we you could. You didn't just write a check for that. No, 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 no. You a had little to, different now. You had to sell. You had to prove that you could sell so many licenses. You had to prove that you had so many consultants that uh, were, were certified. Um, you know, so there was different uh, pieces. Now, as a, as a, what are, the, do, are you guys considered a partner? What's Microsoft call yeah, it? It's partner. A, yeah, it's a partner. So we're a Microsoft Dynamics partner uh, or bi business applications as it's known today. And, and, and okay. like any organization, they go through their changes and require certain things. Uh, now, do they require certain things of you? They do. They do. So, so to, to stay, con it's called a competency. And to stay competent, we have to have uh, a, a number of consultants certified. We do have to have, have uh, the, the sale the show that we're bringing on new customers and we're not just uh, sitting on our laurels and, and milking, let's say, yeah. our customers. They also want to make sure that we're actively engaged with our customers so that we didn't just sell 50 seats of Dynamics, but we're making sure that those 50 users are actually using mm -hmm. the licenses because as people are aware they buy they might buy 50 seats of the of licenses but only 10 people are only act how accessing. important is evaluations like you know it's like you go buy a car now and the sales guy tells you hey now you're gonna get a yeah you're, you're gonna, gonna get, get it. please give me five stars because if you don't <laughs> do you have something like that with microsoft they yeah. want to see uh Happy customers? They yeah. absolutely do, yeah, yeah. So you have to have referenceable customers. That That's another component that they make sure that if- So uh, you get an incentive, you got a double incentive to, to perform. You got, yeah. I got to perform for my customer, I got to perform for my business. Yep. I got to perform to keep this relationship with Microsoft. Yeah, it's too. interesting, right? You, you think that, my, that the vendor would be like just happy that you're out there selling their product, but they're not just happy you selling your product. They want you to make sure that you're staying engaged and that you're looking proactively into the future mm -hmm. as well. Because if you're not, then you're just caught, you're caught behind. Yeah. Uh, the, with the technology that's coming out, literally today something's coming out that I have no idea what they're they're talking about and I have to go learn it yeah. uh, and, or our people have to learn it and, and we're at the point now where I, I I look at our team and say team you're you you three you're focused on this you three you're focused on this you three even within the Microsoft platform which is interesting right because it's like if we were trying to do that across three products yeah. we'd totally be lost and that's what was happening uh, going back to you know, why we really came down because I got to a point where I was talking to customers. I'm like, am I saying Salesforce, SalesLogix, or Microsoft, right? And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. It's not, it's not healthy for me, and it's certainly not good for the customer because I don't know what if I'm saying the right terminology with that. Yeah. So, so staying focused on within their within their technology and what they have to offer and what they're doing is significant, and it's an investment yeah. of us. I mean, we tell our our team, hey, you may have to spend an hour or two hours uh, or three hours a week just learning some new technology. Which they, those guys are into that. They love that. Yeah, they, they absolutely, uh, the, the team goes off and looks at things and they come back. And you back. need that too, right? I mean, as the owner, you need them doing that. Absolutely, because because our customers are looking at us. They want us to bring ideas to them. They don't want ideas brought, you know, they don't yeah. want them to be bringing the ideas. So, so we're always looking out. Uh, we try to do quarterly quarterly reviews with our clients just to sit down. What's new in your business? Is everything healthy? Uh, there are there any changes that we need to be aware of, uh, pluses or minuses, sure. right? And, and and kind of go through that process. What point did, or was there a point in your business where you saw it 
kind of took took a jump. Yeah, yeah. There was a point. Yeah, there was definitely points. There was de- points, points, not just one, but points. What were some of the reasons for the points? Uh, I would say um, just new clients coming on board. I don't know if there, I, if I can say if it's any particular. Did Microsoft time help you clients? with clients? Uh, no, <laughs> they didn't. Help. <laughs> they, they, in the day, it'd be like, hey, you, you go to them and say, can we have leads? And they'd look at you and, well, you give us leads. You know, it's like, you know, it's it, so so it's more of a, we'll back you up, but we're not just going to give you things, right? Which, you know, it looking, wasn't necessarily a two-way street. Yeah, but looking back, you can kind of see why they do it because they want, they, you got as much skin in this game as they got in the skin in the game because you're representing their product, right? Yeah. They want to make sure they have good partners out there doing the right things. And you, you, you got to be, knowledgeable in, yeah. in, in doing this thing. so what were some of these points that you thought wow that was that, that yeah was so we time. we would all of a sudden we would get maybe like five or six big leads that would actually turn into customers and then then it's a problem because you don't have the people to service all those at one time right so it's it's a uh, it's a it's a back yeah. fill uh, issue. and even like five years ago in your industry CRM people they weren't in an abundance nope Nope. I mean, that just took off in the last probably maybe two years or so. Yeah, three, probably two, three years. Yeah. People don't come out of college, right? They don't know dynamics. They don't know Salesforce. They don't so know. finding people would, would have been a little bit of a burden. Yeah, it's very difficult. I went into a couple uh, classes. Like I, I got asked to go to, for instance, go back to Kent to the business school and talk about our product. Go to Case Western and talk about the product. Go to Akron, talk about. And, and so I would go into the, the classes and, and talk to these individuals. And it was fun. I enjoyed it because it was going back to kind of the roots and, and, and looking at people going, oh my, that, that was me 20 years ago, right? And I had no idea what I was doing. And, and back then, IT was really nothing when we were going to school, right? And, and it, so, so going in there and, and talking with, with the students and, and seeing what they're coming out as and, and what we can do. Um, and so the, the plat, you know, with those plateaus, it was like new things were coming on and how do we service them? How do, how do we do things? And how do we, how do we bring on that talent? Yeah. Um, so how does uh, how does your business look today from your perspective as far as problems hurdles compared to problems hurdles years ago? Yeah, probably the big the biggest thing right now is just working with the individuals, right? And 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 knowing what trying to figure out what's in, going on in their brains and uh, wanting them to do the best that they can. And wanting them to grow within the organization and what is the path that we can lead them on or what can I give them? The employee is, the employee is key for, for a business owner. Right. And, and especially in professional services. We are only as good as the people. And we know that. If, if our people are disgruntled, if our people are not satisfied with the work that they do, they can, they can easily go to somebody else. Um, so we need to make sure that we're keep, keeping them satisfied in, in, in the work that they do, that they're happy with the, the project that they're on. So you got a lot more HR things going that you got to address today. We do. We do. And we got to make sure that we're, we're, we got a growth path for the individual, right? Because somebody may be more into sales. Somebody may be more into marketing. Somebody may be really into the technology. Somebody may blend that line between sales and and technology, right? And, and and then we have the hardcore developer, right? And, and in our in our world, the developer isn't necessarily needed as much as it was seven, eight years ago. We need their mindset, we need their knowledge, but it, the program has come so far that you don't need to code necessarily, but you need to know all that knowledge. Yeah. So what do we do with individuals that are, are really hardcore developers and that 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 isn't maybe necessary anymore um, but it is key to making sure that we have that talent available or we have an employee that's maybe in their mid-20s and they're looking at their future right how do I continue my growth path how do I make more money how do I Stay home more with my family, right? And it's that balance between. And you're saying, I just need you to work right now. Right? <laughs> I just need you to work. And it's funny because I look back and I look at myself and it's like, I remember those days. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to make money. And I wanted to know that I was safe, right? And 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 it's kind of like all those things playing together in your yep. brain. And and what is it? And, and I want the boss to know yep. that I care about my work. And now you're the boss. Right? And that's a big part of what 
being the owner is yeah. managing that. It's totally, it's, it's sitting with the people, understanding them. And, and, and I wish I was better at this. And I try like crazy to, to meet with people as much as possible, but there's days or even weeks where I go by and I've, Oh man, I haven't talked to somebody in a while. I better pick up the phone and just have a chat. Right. And see what's going through their brain and what's going on. And, and, you know, that's important because, yeah. because that person, I know that recruiters are out there talking to every one of our employees and, and it's, you know, it's like, I, there's nothing I can do about that. So, so I hope that I give our employees the right env- environment and I, and we hope that we give them everything that, that satisfies them yeah. um, and, and makes them happy for, for what they are and what they, what they want to do. Yeah. Um, what were some of the, as you look back now, what were some of the biggest hurdles for you? Uh, I, one of them is finding the right talent. And uh, I remember one or two hires, right, that, that uh, we brought on just because we had a job, right? And we needed bodies. We need bodies to fill that job to get that work done. And I'll never forget, we brought on two people. And, and then l- within 30 days, we looked at those two people. Oh, my goodness. This is the wrong <laughs> hire, right? And just like. But at the time. Of, oh, yeah. I like, need. I, I, yeah. I got to get bodies and seats here. Exactly. Exactly. But but and then one of them we kept. The other one we're like, uh, I'm sorry, but you, you have to go. <laughs> yeah. And that was hard, right? That, that was not easy because. Uh, we, you know, you bring somebody on thinking, oh my, I can't screw this up. I know what I'm doing. Right. And it's like, oh boy, I didn't, I did not know that. So talent is, is always a worry, you know, and, and really, uh, and it's, it's been from day one. Right. Um, you know, and then I would say making sure that we stay current uh, with the, the times and and how how we pay people. Right? Is is it a bonus? Is it straight? Is it just salary itself? You know, how are people motivated? Well, your industry too is very dynamic right now. Yeah, it changes. Uh, some people some people are highly incentive by hey I have, by billable hours, right? And I'll go bill and give me incentive. Other people are like, you know what? I just want to know that I have a good paycheck and tell me what to do. So it's, it's finding that balance between the person and what, what their goals are, you know, in their life and what they want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and then sales itself, right? That, that's a challenge. You got to make sure that you're going out and talking with people. Uh, and, uh, I tell my guys, uh, Hey, go to that breakfast, go to that luncheon as as painful as it might feel like when you're getting up at six o'clock in the morning and go to a seven o'clock breakfast or getting up at five to go to a six o'clock breakfast, right? Go to the breakfast, sit at the table. You have no idea who you're going to sit next to and have no idea if they're interested or not interested. And I, there's numerous times where I'm like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then I show up, I sit down, have a cup of coffee or a soda or whatever. And next thing you know, I'm talking up uh, with a bunch of people and guess what we have is a lead and is a sale, right? And it, yep. it's so funny to, to do that. And my, my team always laughs at me. They're like, quit telling us to go to the breakfast. Quit telling us to go to the network. It's like, well, that's what they're like. We know it, it works. So what's your role today? You've so, been in business 11 years. Mm-hmm. said you got 24 yeah. When, when did I? Well, I graduated in 92, so I got to do the math after that. No, I didn't know. You, you, had, you said you had 24 employees. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. what's your role look like today? Oh, so, yeah. So I, I really lead the, the whole organization. I, I'm, I'm, I guess people call me an integrator uh, with, within the organization because I'm looking down at the sales team. I'm looking down at the operations team. I'm looking over our marketing team, right? And, and I'm, I'm looking at what is the, what are the things that we have to do to make ourselves better tomorrow? And what are, what are some of those tactical steps that we need to make sure that we accomplish to make sure that we're relevant tomorrow, right? Look back at the past. Don't, don't dwell on it. Uh, l- learn about it. And then go out and, and strive to, to get those next possibilities. Is it people? Is it offices? Is it just going out to a luncheon and talking with individuals of, uh, or of organizations of what they are looking for? Uh, should we pick up a new product line? Should we become uh, uh, within Microsoft? Should we uh, learn a new competency, right? So it's really just overseeing the organization, making sure we're healthy, making sure people are staying on top of things and, and learning uh, yeah. along with it too. What keeps you up at night? 
Oh, <laughs> making sure that we get paid on time. <laughs> I would say Wait, you're saying cash is still king. <laughs> cash is always king. Cash right? is still king. Uh, yeah, it's it's king. And and you know, I, I want to make sure that uh, people are happy. I mean, I you know, between between happy clients, happy employees, uh, we got a good we got a good organization. Uh, you know, you can't just have one without the other. Uh, I, I want to make sure that when we get done with a project that I can go back into that client or pick up the phone and say, hey, did everything go well? And if it didn't, tell me why. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's one thing, you know, I, I want to make sure that, that people know that we are passionate about their success and we're not there to just collect the, the bill from them. When you look back, is there anything you look back at and you say, I really did that right? <clears throat> I mean, even when you I mean pat yourself on the back, is there one thing you say, man, I, I did that right? Yeah, I think uh, we when we started the company, we we were really passionate about the employees, and we we wanted to make sure that we did right by the employees. Day know? one, day one, yeah. We're not we're not out just for us. We're out for everybody, and we're looking after you. We're looking at uh, we got your back covered. Um, and that you're going to be happy either 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 when you leave us now or when you retire from our organization. And um, um, I feel like we've really been able to look at the employee and say, hey, we're here for you as much as we are for the customer. How about the other side? Anything you look back and you say, man, if I had to do it over again. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't do that. I would do this. Yeah, I don't think so. We're, we're, we've, you know, we really looked at our other organization that we came from, and we really took those things. Uh, so you had a little bit of a, a reference to say, hey, they did this well. They didn't do that well. Yeah, yeah. and we didn't want to repeat those, right? Now, maybe we have and haven't, haven't noticed it and being the owner. That was sometime. probably a, a benefit for you, right? Yeah, yeah. So it definitely uh, allowed us to uh, look back and say, this is what we want to do and not want to do. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, interesting. So if somebody was watching today or listening to you today and they're thinking about starting a business, what kind of advice would you give them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I would definitely say to write a business plan, right? Even if it's a small, what do I think what I can, needs to be in it? Yeah, what 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 do I think I can sell? Uh, what do I think my expenses are going to be? How long do I think I need to go without making any money before I need to make it another decision? You know, I think planning is key whenever you're starting anything, uh, even if it's a small project at your house or if it's, you know, a a new business, that if you go in with your eyes wide open and understand what it's going to take to make this happen, you're going to be a lot better off. You know, you don't want to eliminate. You don't need the shock and awe. Eliminate the surprises, right? And, and, And I tell our people, it's like, hey, when we go into a client, I want to know the answers to the questions they have not asked us right now. Because when that question comes up, I want to be able to answer it without any Skip in a heartbeat, right? And 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 I think when you start a business, you need to look at every angle that is possible. And, you know, could it be a natural disaster uh, that, that occurs? Could it be a technology flaw that that occurs? Could it be a bad hire? Could it be people just don't pay on time? So do you have enough credit from the bank to survive for a period of time? So you need to you know really look at all the different angles uh, that you're that you possibly could happen, be it, be it a professional services firm or starting up a manufacturing company, right? You need to understand what your costs are, uh, what, what it takes to get talent in. Uh, do you need facilities? Uh, all, all those pieces yeah. in there. Well, I, I think that's good advice because, you know, if you don't go into it with eyes wide open, the first rough thing that happens, huh. you can easily shut it down. Fail, right? Right. Rather than, hey, I knew that. I'm going to keep going. And you don't know what's down the road. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure when you first started this, you probably didn't necessarily envision everything you're doing today. No, no. There's there's surprises that every, you know, as, as much as I want to say we've planned for everything, I get a surprise. Just when I think things are going well, then all of a sudden, wham, and you're like, oh, <laughs> why did that happen? But but you, you, yep. you, you're you aware of it. And but you, you, would, you wouldn't give up the journey for anything. Heck no, no. I, I share with people, I think the value's in the journey. Mm-hmm. 
I, I'm so happy, you know, people have said, could you go work for somebody right now? And I, and I say, I don't think anybody wants me to work for them right now. It'd be hard, <laughs> wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be very difficult, right? And, and I, you probably wouldn't be a good employee being your own boss for a while, right? It, it, that would be hard. I would drive everybody crazy, right? And, and I, you know, it's like, I, I have opinions, right? <laughs> and uh, I, I think they're the right opinions, <laughs> but it's good. You know, it, you gotta be able to listen too, though. As, as, as an owner, as a boss, as, a, as the person overseeing it, you can't just go in there and tell people what to do. You have to listen. Do you have a Do you have a key person in your organization that's kind of your right hand person? Yeah, and, and I would say it's more than one. Uh, we have multiple people that uh, we we have a team to put together. Uh, we we have a very solid management team that we, we meet on a weekly basis, and we discuss issues. We discuss positives and negatives. Uh, we discuss what we want to do for the future. And you know, granted, I I can overrule or we can overrule each other, but but you know it's we listen and we yeah. really take that to heart because if we don't, then what good are we? Um, yeah. You know, we we need to understand that you know there, there's other things and people have other ideas sure. that are out there. So. Hey, if somebody wanted to contact you, how would they reach you? Yeah, so they can just go to our website www.trellispoint.com. Uh, and uh, they, there's a contact us there and, and find us there. Reach so, you there. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for thanks for coming in. Yeah, I knew you great. had a, I knew you had an interesting story. I didn't know all your story, <laughs> and uh, so this was uh, was very interesting. I appreciate you taking time. I know you're busy. Yeah, this is great. I, it's fun. It's you don't realize what you, what you, what you've gone through until you talk through it. It's so, crazy. Yeah, it's fun. It's I, thanks for thanks for the invite. Yep, yep. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we're gonna have more shows like this. And uh, this was a good one. You know, it was funny and. Uh, uh, what an experience, what a journey. If you like shows like this, uh, keep tuning in, hit subscribe. There'll be more shows like this. Also, if you have ideas of shows that you would like us to be producing, send me an, e an email, uh, dharsh at danharsh.com. Would love to hear from you. But hey, thanks for tuning in.